when you're setting up your hand tool uh, workshop, wood shop, when you have your whole space situated and you have all your tools laid out, some of the most important tools that you're gonna wanna go to all the time that you'll be using all the time are pretty basic uh, and they can be shop made. All mine are. So I have these squares, these shop made squares, a straight edge and these winding sticks. So I wanted to talk about those things today, show you the differences and why I use wooden tools as opposed to metal tools. Um, some of you uh, might be familiar with this kind of square, this metal square. There are all sorts of different kinds of squares today. This one even has a little 45 degree on it. Um, and this is pretty common. However, what I've found is that um, I, I don't really like using this because uh, using a metal square on, uh, you know, especially a softwood piece, it's just liable to dent things, ding things, and that kind of stuff. Also, I like how light these are. So I like having a little wooden square. Even something this huge is really quite light. So um, there's nothing really wrong with them. Obviously, metal stays put. But people worry about, you know, are the wooden squares going to freak out and kind of twist and warp? Um, and I've not found that to be the case. That, that doesn't really um, come into play. I'm not doing, you know, machinist level precision. It's just woodworking. So I'm not worried about that. Um, and the degree to which they move is I can't notice it. Um, so one of the things you want to consider with this, though, is you want, if you're choosing wood for a square, I have all sorts of uh, kinds of wood here. Uh, this is cherry, this is maple, uh, this is oak. This is actually torrified oak, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but there are all kinds of woods you can use, but the most important thing you want to consider is th the grain orientation. So if you want, if you get quarter sawn stocks, so you have the growth rings going up and down like this, that's going to be the ideal stock. That's the most stable. If you have flat sawn material, like if, if you picture this and it was in the round like this, uh, that's going to be more liable to cup and move and twist. So um, that's the kind of stuff you want to think about. If you were to make a square and you take your stock out and you get it all prepped and you leave it sit out for a week, see if it kind of twists and moves. Then that, if that happens, that's a good indicator that that's not really the, the piece of wood you want to use for this. So uh, there are two different styles uh, here. I have four sizes of squares, but the, there are two different styles that I have. Um, the first is this one here. I'll bring it down here into the light so you can see. You can see this bridle joint. So in the handle here, there's just uh, there are two the two ends come up, and there's just a, a slot in the middle. This is called a bridle joint, and so the blade just is glued right in there and then pinned with three pins. So it's quite simple. It's very easy to do, and you can even you just have to get the this back edge and this front edge to be lined up so that it sits the blade square and then you can glue it and then after the fact you can pin it so that's quite easy to do the other the other style is like is this so i'll have you come in here so you can see these two tenons coming up through and then there's material in the middle this is part of the handle so there are actually two tenons coming through and that is a lot trickier especially with this little bit of material um, out the at the, the very end of the handle, it's hard to get that just right and everything square. So to, to do a square like that, it's gonna potentially be theoretically a little more stable, I guess. But um, I, I don't know about that. In my experience, these are just fine. So you could just do a bridle joint, glue it, and then pin it with three pins, and it's not going anywhere. Um, so the, um, the proportions of these are really kind of by eye. It's not a big deal, but the handle uh, needs to be pretty long. Obviously, this is for wide stock, quite wide. Um, and this is one I use all the time. This is probably, oh, I don't know, eight inches or so. I don't have perfect measurements on these. It's just sort of approximate. Um, so all these things come in handy. Um, but I like having a variety of sizes. The only downside uh, to uh, being able to, to using wooden squares is that you can, when you uh, put the square on, you can, with a knife, accidentally nick it and, and, and scar the surface and that's going to end up damaging it. So you have to be really careful when you're using a square, a wooden square, that you're not actually uh, damaging the top edge. You can clean it up, but it is an issue that you have to keep in mind. So um, in addition to squares, uh, the next step here is uh, the straight edge. Now if you can, you can kind of think of a straight edge as uh, the blade of the square. 
but this is obviously a lot longer and this needs to be dead dead straight so let me show you this there are two little techniques i want to show you right over here you can check a square check the squareness of a square by uh putting it on a, a straight edge here right so you're checking this and you're scribing your line like that and then you can put it over here and check I know you can't see that, but that's how you that's how you check it. You make sure that it's uh, consistent here, and if it's a little bit out, you can clean it up. A straight edge, checking that is kind of similar. Again, the lighting here is not good, but I'll show you. Basically, you'll have two points, top and bottom. You'll scribe that, and then you flip it over, fold it over on the other side, and you'll line it up to see that you have your pencil line right on there. And so if it's a little bit uh, proud in the middle, what you're doing is you're doubling the distance that it's out. So that informs how you adjust your square, or your, your straight edge. So the other thing is, what I've done for this straight edge um, is that only one side is actually truly straight that I try to mess with and keep straight. The top edge I don't really care about. It just looks like it's consistent thickness. Um, and so what I've done is I have these little, this little detail on the bottom. So I always know what my straight edge is. It's not this. This is just for looks. This is my straight edge. And that really helps you focus your efforts, uh, focus your energy on what you need to keep good. Um, in addition, I mean, you kind of have the same situation with a square in that if the blade is uh, perpendicular, then this is going to be square and the outside is going to be square. You know, because if you do that, you want that to be square as well as the inside. Um, and maintaining those can be a little bit tricky, but it's it's easy to, if you need to adjust, if you need to adjust, you can put this in a vise and very carefully plane to even this out to make sure that you have, you're truing up your square. But obviously I can't, I can't really go inside as much. So that's a little bit of an issue you have to be keeping in mind, that you can true these up, but um, the outside is what I use more often than the inside. So uh, lastly, um, I have these winding sticks. And these winding sticks are quite useful when you need them, uh, but I don't use them all that often. I don't use them on every project. But these are just two straight sticks that are dead parallel. So that means the top edge and the bottom edge are exactly um, perpendicular, the, the lines are parallel, or not perpendicular, parallel rather, so that when I set them here, I can, let's see here, I'll show you this, let's check this board, I can put my winding sticks on here and see what this is doing is this is exaggerating the difference, showing the, the twist that might be in this board. So if this side is like this or like this, uh, it'll tell you, it'll exaggerate the difference. And so you can move down and see. And this just has some black ink on the top, so you can uh, see the contrast between this black and this one. You could also reverse them. But that black line just helps you see the difference. And so you're sighting, you're squinting, looking at this one, and comparing the top edge of this to the top edge of this. And if they're not parallel, then you know what you need to adjust. So winding sticks are useful when you need them. For short stock, I find as long as I basically just kind of sight the boards for most furniture making uh, projects, and then that's enough. I don't need to really mess with winding sticks. But in some situations where it has to be, you know, really uh, bang on, you know, just, just right, uh, the winding sticks are really handy. So I think that it is worth uh, making these things, uh, not only because you can keep making squares and keep messing with it, uh, keep you know, adjusting the tools that you want, but also it's really good to have the skills to make a pair of winding sticks. I would highly recommend doing that. Some people want to get angle iron from a store because it's, you know, perfectly machined and you can do that. But I'd say if you're doing that because you don't have the skills to do this, work on the skills to do this. These are going to be really important things for you to know how to do as a hand tool woodworker. Um, so I'm happy with all these tools. The only thing that I would say is I tried this this torrified oak because torrified oak is I can't remember the process but it's basically like <clears throat> almost like charred it's like um, pressurized and heated up so that um, it becomes a very stable wood and this is sold for flooring and so I guess it's like a cool thing people like torrified oak so if you look it up that's what you'll see is oak flooring and it kind of looks cool 
um, and is super stable, so I thought that would be perfect material for a square. Uh, turns out the, that whole process, the torrifying process, makes this stuff like crumbly. So it does not cut clean at all. It was so painful to make this. Uh, and any little chip, it's just like, it's like crumbly. It's almost like not quite charcoal, but that's kind of what it feels like when you're working with it. So uh, it worked, it went together, but it was a painful process. So you just want to look for stable wood. Um, I would choose uh, non-figured wood, uh, quarter sawn, something like that. That's just going to be nice and stable. Um, and then you can make your own tools. You can make, you know, I've, I've made my hand planes. Uh, you can make mallets, you can make squares. Uh, most everything that you need, if you're a woodworker, you can make those tools. So that's what's an encouraging thing about setting up your own shop is that you can get yourself pretty well set up on your own. So if this is of interest to you, you want to learn more about it, uh, every day, every weekday, we post on the Daily Dispatch. And so you can subscribe there. Uh, if you click up here, uh, you can see that we have, uh, there's a link to be able to, uh, every day we're sending out emails and videos and you know, some pictures and discussions about looking at antique furniture. So subscribe there because we're getting that stuff, you know, every day we're posting stuff. And that's, this is our world. This is the stuff we love to do. And if that's of interest to you, we think uh, the dispatch is the best place to get it.